are the church. We 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 are the church. Happy Monday, everyone! Woohoo! I'm sure you're awake, you're alive, you're just like ready to go for the week. And if you're not, we're here to help. We're gonna have some fun worshiping and moving around and learning some great stuff this week. So we hope you'll join us. We're gonna start with Fill My Cup. So get ready to do some actions and we'll have a great time. Here we go. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week of We Are the Church. Our weekly theme for this week is trust. So we're going to be learning about how we can trust God to love us and care for us and all kinds of things like that. We have wonderful speakers this week. It's going to be a lot, lot of fun. I welcome you to worship in the name of the Creator. I welcome you to worship in the name of the Sustainer. I welcome you to worship in the name of the Redeemer. Now, I'm going to bring up Tina so we can do the theme verse. Theme verse. We watching uh, these worships and participating. It's good for all of us to think about. 
So we're going to sing our theme song of the summer now to We Are the Church, and then we're going to dig into our new theme of the week. Call your name, beloved and claimed, yes I love you. Every day you'll hear me say, yes I love you. Now I ask you, what can you do to say I love you? To everyone here and everyone there, say I love you. church so let's be the church share god's love to everyone let's start now come on let's run you and me together we can be the So, so far this summer, we've learned about how we are beloved children of God, and last week we talked about creation. This week, as John said, we're going to dig into the word trust. Our stories this week are, are interesting ones with people from the Bible who have trusted God to do big things, and sometimes they were... Um, they felt like they were really equipped, and other times they didn't, and they still trusted God anyway and did, ended up sharing great things and leading the church in new ways. So we'll learn about that, and we're excited to do so. I want you to think for a second before we start with our story. What does trust even mean to you? I want you to take two or three minutes, push pause on your, uh, on your device, that you're watching us on and find someone in your house to talk to. If you don't have anyone, just think. What makes you trust someone? Why do you trust someone? And when you do and they, uh, you know, like react in good ways consistently, how does that make you feel? Does that make you want to trust them again? Let's talk about that and we'll see you back here. You can unpause when you're done talking. Well, we hope that you uh, have a little bit more um, in your mind right now about what trust really means. Tina's going to come up and read our first story of the week about Abram's call. Let's see how Abram ended up trusting God with his life and his family's life. Our story today can be found in your Spark Bible on pages 26 through 29. And this story is called Abram's Call. One day God said to a man named Abram, it's time for you to leave your home and family and go to a new land. In this land, I will give you many things and make sure people know about you. I will be kind to those who are kind to you. To the ones who are unkind, I will be unkind. Because of you, all the families on earth will be blessed. Abram was 75 years old and he had a long white beard, but he didn't let age stop him. On his trip, Abram took his wife, Sarai, and his nephew, Lot. They walked the many miles leading to the new land. It was a hot and dusty trip, but Abram knew that where God was leading them would be a beautiful place. The trip was long and hard because they carried all their pots and pans, dishes and clothes with them. Phew, I'm hot, said Sarai as her face grew red. I'm getting kind of tired, sighed Abram. 
My feet hurt, groaned Lot. When they finally got to the land of Canaan, Abram stopped by a tall and shady oak tree. It felt good to get out of the blazing sun. God came to him there in the cool shade and said, I have a surprise for you. I promise to give this land to your family forever. Abram and Sarai and Lot were so thankful to God for this wonderful gift. They jumped and danced and hugged each other and shouted, Hooray! To show God how grateful they were, Abram decided to build two altars to honor God. He would build one altar out of large, smooth stones by the tree, and the other altar out of pieces of wood by his tent in the hills. This story is a really important story in the Bible. It's the start of something really big. You maybe have heard of Abram and Sarai as Abraham and Sarah, and they continue to be, uh, their story continues to develop after what we just read. Today's guest is someone that has done just um, what Abram and Sarah had to do. He picked up and moved from a long ways away, actually Argentina, and came to the United States. And our guest, Andreas, Pastor Andreas, has some really great things to say about trusting God through that and how important the church is when you get to a new place. So we hope you have fun listening to Pastor Andreas. Hello, Pastor Andres. We are so glad to welcome you to our worship service today. Yeah, glad to be here with you. Yes. Thank you very much. We'd like to introduce you to everyone uh, participating today by asking you some questions. So the first one is, what community do you call home? Okay, I am wearing this t-shirt. I will stand up and then you can read where I am originally from. I am originally from Argentina. Um, I, I grew up in a Danish family, so this is where my last name comes from. Albert Sen, yeah? S-E-N. I always have to clarify that it is not S-O-N. S-E-N, as they say. Um, but I, I, I have been living in Minnesota since 2011. Um, so, yeah, I have home in Argentina and, and I have home in Minnesota now, yes. Yeah, that's... But I have lived in, in different places in, in Minnesota and I am expecting to move to Wilmar in the coming months, so, yeah. In, in a few months, I, I expect to be saying that, yeah, my place is Wilmer, but not yet. Yeah, that's great. Well, Wilmer is so close to camp, so that will be fun. That relates to the next question here, that you um, have a church community um, that you're working for right now. You might have another one that you attend too, but what, what church community or communities do you call home right now? Yes, this is, of course, Wilmer, where I have been serving as uh, their third pastor since August last year, uh, Vinci Lutheran Church in Wilmer. But um, since I, I came to the U.S. in 2011, my congregation has been St. Paul Reformation Lutheran Church in St. Paul. Actually, 2011 was not the first time I, I came to the Twin Cities. Um, in 2009, I was having a sabbatical semester. I, I spent the second half of that year in Chicago, and I came to, to the Twin Cities, to Minneapolis, for the church's church-wide assembly. And on that occasion, I met a couple from that church and a friend of theirs um, from uh, Denver who was visiting for the church-wide assembly. And, and we became so closely friends and, and we say that they are my parents in, um, in the U.S. and they actually are with all what this implies. So I like this idea that when you are um, far from home, um, you find the home from home 
in the church. And, and with St. Paul Reformation Lutheran Church, it is so literally, literally, yeah. So uh, that I have my Minnesota parents there. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's such a cool thing as we're talking about how we are the church. That's an, oh, I just love that story. Thank you for sharing that with all of us. Well, you've kind of alluded to this a little bit, but um, Andres, can you tell us about your vocation? Well, I have been a, a pastor many years. I, it will be my 29th uh, ordination anniversary this, this month. Um, so I was ordained as a pastor in, in, in Denmark um, because the Danish Lutheran communities in Argentina are still, to this day, part of the Church of Denmark. So I had to go to Denmark to be ordained. And then I returned to Argentina and I served one of our Lutheran Danish congregations, the one in Buenos Aires, for 20 years before coming to the U.S. Um, to pursue doctoral studies. But, but uh, with with the idea um, uh, of, of, of serving the church with the education I, I could get. So, so yeah, I, I have a kind of dual vocation as a pastor and as a teacher. And of course, as a pastor, you are, yeah, teaching, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, is a big part of what it means to be a pastor. So, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. You have a lot of, of things for us to learn about. That's so great. We're going to ask you some sort of different questions now. So the first one, it's been fun to hear the answer to this from lots of people. But what is your favorite uh, flavor of ice cream? Uh, I, I have a question. Maybe uh, some of, of, of the people and kids watching know what dulce de leche is from, yeah. From Argentina, they they call it different names in in other countries. But but any flavor containing dulce de leche would be my favorite. And and it is not so easy to find here, at least not in the grocery store where I normally would buy ice cream, not on each street, right? Uh, um, but so caramel is very similar. So any ice cream with caramel would be my favorite when I cannot find Dulce de Leche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so good. And one more uh, fun question here. Do you have a secret gift? And maybe it's not so secret, but a gift that ma not many people might know you have. Oh, I ha um, thank you for sending those questions uh, before so I could sing a little about it. And, and I actually came to, to the conclusion that that one gift I, I have, um, you know, as pastors, we are public persons, right? And, and um, um, addressing people and, and, and so it is easy to embarrass yourself. And, and I do this a lot, um, uh, sometimes because I am not good, some, I pronounce a word in English uh, wrongly, I think I just did before with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so then I think I have a gift to turn that embarrassing situation into a, a um, opportunity where I also can can laugh at myself and then make people laugh without feeling guilty. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the story that we read just before talking to you today out of the Spark Bible is a story of Abram's call. Um, and uh, there's a lot of things in this story, but Abram is asked to just pick up and move to a new place and, and trust that um, what God is asking him to do is good. Um, and this is part of why I asked you to be a, a part of our interview today, because I know you have picked up and gone to new places. And so we're just curious, um, this story about Abram's call and his trust in God, is there anything that this story says to you or that has, um, you know, been important as you've read this story? Um, yes, I, I, I have, yeah, I can see myself in, in, um, in 
Abraham there, right? Living and, and, and going out, exploring the, the, the world. Um, uh, I am doing now what, what my grandparents did yeah, two generations ago when they decided to leave Denmark and move to Argentina. And I can imagine many of the, the kids and the people watching this service, they also have, uh, yeah, um, uh, are descendants from immigrants, right? Um, so, so it is a, a, a good thing, God willed thing to, to leave yeah, our parents' home. Yeah, I was, uh, when, when thinking of this, I was re reading the parable of the father with the two sons. And normally we will, we will blame how can he leave uh, uh, um, as if it is something bad that the, the younger son wants to leave. And actually there is no reproach on the part of the father when he asks for the money he needs to, to, to start a, a, a new adventure outside the parents' home. So this is what we, in different ways, are, are meant to do. But, but then um, um, uh, what is important is that, that we should, um, that we have that base, yeah? We, we can always come back. Sure. So, right? And this is so interesting that even when it is so far away that Abraham and, and Sarah move, they keep the connection with, with their family in, in the way that Isaac will, will then get his wife from there and Jacob will travel there. So, um, um, and so this is, um, so I, I think I have that base in, in Argentina, but sometimes when, when we need home and are far away from home, we then have church as a home from home. So this is where I return to what I was telling you before. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and I think this altar uh, Abraham builds is kind of a, what, what we today would call church. And, and, and this is what, yeah, many of the churches where we worship or we used to worship when we could be in the sanctuaries were built by those immigrants who, who, who needed yeah, a home from, from home and, and the closest to home they could be when they were far away from home was, was the church. Yeah? Well, Pastor Andres, it was, it was great to talk to you today. We're looking forward to having you in the Wilmer area uh, more often soon. And maybe we'll even get you out to camp here. And when kids are back, you can visit and they'd get to meet you. So uh, I would like, I, yeah, I can say I am already looking forward to do that. Yeah. yeah, great. Well, thank you for being a part of our worship today. And we hope to see you soon. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Have good. A good uh, you too, thank you. Wasn't that great to hear from Pastor Andreas? We all can keep learning about trust in our lives, and we will this week, and how important the church can be in our lives too, as we go on new journeys and try new things that God is asking us to do. Our song of the week this week is called You Are Holy, and it is one of our favorite camp songs around here. It, um, it splits into parts, and the parts go together, and you'll kind of see how it goes as we, as we try it. So we invite you um, to sing along. This song has all kinds of words and different ways um, that God is God to us. And so um, as we think about trusting God in our lives, these are just so many different ways and, and things that uh, descriptors of God that um, help us maybe think about um, how important that is. So, all right, we'll give it a try. We hope you have fun.
pray with me and we're going to do a repeat after me prayer. Here we go. Dear God, I love you so much. Thank you for everything you've given me and everyone around me. We thank you for this creation and for your abounding love through all parts of my life. In your name we pray. Amen. It's time for our blessing. Again, we hope you're doing this at home, participating um, and being a part of this as a reminder that you are a loved child of God and you are called to be a part of the church. So find someone to do it with. And if you don't have someone, you can uh, do it alone to yourself. That works too. So I'm welcoming John and Amy up today. Here we go. God loves you. God, God loves, loves you. you. Jesus gave his life for you. Jesus gave his life for you. The Holy Spirit is here with you. The Holy Spirit is here with you. Now go and be the church. Now go and be the church. Our final song today is Everywhere I Go. Let's think about those words and as we think about trusting God knowing that God is in all and in everything that we do all around us. That's a helpful thing to know when we know, uh, when we think about trusting um, Him, trusting God, right? So we'll sing this song together. It's really fun. Stand up. If you don't know it, just kind of go for it. You'll, you'll learn it quick. It's easy and uh, catchy too. So have fun. Thank you.